People often refer to Proposition 13 in California and suggest that it's ruined California and made it impossible to balance the budget. Is that the case? Proposition 13 in California is probably the best known proposition across the globe from 1978. And what happened, what happened with Proposition 13 is that property prices had been uh, rising by dramatic rates, uh, but property tax rates were held constant. So you had a lot of people, say retired individuals, who had fixed incomes, uh, but their property taxes were skyrocketing because through no fault of their own, the, uh, the, the values of their homes were going up. So they revolted, as they say, in 1978, and they said, look, there's a maximum amount of property taxes that anybody can, can pay. Um, now, that law, of course, constrained the, the government, and the government had to find other revenue sources and, and so forth. Uh, but uh, it remains popular within the state of California now, some odd 30, 30 years later. It's sometimes a convenient whipping boy for anybody who, who doesn't like uh, 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 the way government's going, that particularly those who want to have a spending program uh, that isn't being funded by the government, they, it's convenient to blame Proposition 13 to say, well, the money's not there because of Proposition 13. Uh, but the truth is the state has, has plenty of money to spend. Uh, the state spends a lot of money, uh, and uh, the state uh, has plenty of tools to balance its budget. Uh, there's, there's very few restrictions on the spending side, so the state can balance its budget by cutting spending. There's plenty of other revenue sources as well, uh, personal income tax, sales taxes, and, and so forth. Uh, so. So the, the idea that Proposition 13 has somehow made the state un ungovernable um, is just un untenable. Uh, there's many, many years that the state's been perfectly fine balancing its budget, including uh, including some, some very recent years. So th I think that's more of a story or a whipping boy for people that don't like the, the fact that government spending was restrained a bit by Proposition 13 than a reflection of actual fact. No, I mean, it's made things a little difficult in some ways, but... Um there are, there are two things. One is there's a lot of studies on this, and, and Berkeley, UC Berkeley, has a great website of information on this for people who want to know more than more than is decent about knowing about this. Um, it did change revenue gathering in the state. It changed how the state financed education and its relationship to to local government. So it did change a lot of things. But the fundamental fact is uh, of it is that. People during the 1970s were asked to pay taxes, an increasing amount of ta taxes, uh, at a time when the state was running huge budget surpluses, and it wasn't clear to voters what they, the money was being spent on. And so voters quite reasonably said, hold on a minute, if you don't tax us so much. And now we could argue about the relative balance between services and taxes, and you know, I work in the public sector, so I'm okay with, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a tax and spend person too, just by nature of my job, in, in a sense. But still, it's reasonable when you're talking about voters being taxed, as, that voters are confident uh, that their money is being spent wisely or on things that they want to do so. And Prop 13 was a sign that they, they didn't have that confidence. Now we see a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a U-turn on voters' part, that they are more willing to give taxes and be taxed for if they think it's if they think the tax is legitimate. It's a fairly sensible kind of position that voters have. Or, or another way, or maybe a shorter way of putting it is, politicians did not always make the case to voters that their tax money was being spent wisely and so being raised wisely. A lot of people criticise direct democracy and criticising the voters per se. And, and my first point is, well, they don't say that about elections generally. These are the same people voting in governments, voting in the European Parliament we saw in, in, in Europe recently. Um, so the criticisms people make about voters and direct democracy could equally be applied to voters at election time, and we wouldn't even think of doing away with elections. So we do have to kind of moderate the criticisms we make of voters time after time. That they're, they're overstated, they, they're not borne out by the empirical evidence. So we do really have to, to, to watch that one.